All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Frank Cabri. I'm with Aviatrix. Excited to be here today. And what I'm going to do in this session is go through a brief overview of, of who Aviatrix is and, uh, and what we do for customers. So to get started on that, let's uh, just look at Aviatrix and who we are. Uh, we're an emerging leader in cloud routers. We're purpose-built for AWS, Azure, and, and Google um, to connect, uh, uh, provide connectivity in those environments. And uh, we think we've got a unique architecture in what we call a software-defined central controller. Uh, that automates and orchestrates uh, gateways to perform different networking functions. And that architecture is strategic for us because it allows us to meet our mission, which is to make cloud networking as simple and dynamic as compute and storage. So as you can expect, we're heavily partnered with uh, AWS, Azure, uh, and Google. Uh, we like to point out that uh, about a year ago, AWS recognized us with a, a network competency badge. And you know, that's a badge you can't purchase as a vendor. You have to earn it through your solution, the strength of your product, and the success in deployment with customers. So we're proud of that. Uh, we were founded by Sherry, and we're headquartered in, uh, venture funded and headquartered in uh, Palo Alto, just right up the street. So it's important, I think, just to show you the customer adoption that, that we've, uh, that we've uh, gained over the past uh, few years. This is a sample list of our customers who have bought into the approach of software-defined cloud routing. Uh, these customers, as you can see, extend across all different vertical industries. So technology, banking, finance, uh, consumer products, uh, higher ed, uh, government. And you know, we're seeing a lot of these customers also embrace multi-cloud, so they want to leave that door open. They want a solution that can, uh, maybe they're using a single cloud today, but they want to be able to extend that to a multi-cloud environment going forward. They want their developers to be able to choose the best services depending on which cloud delivers the best services for that project. Uh, but regardless of the application that they're running, I think the thing that all these customers have in common is that they want networking to be uh, simple in the cloud. They don't want to bring the complexity of the on-prem networking environment into the cloud. And whether that's you know, SoFi doing a user VPN so that their users can create loans faster for their customers, or whether it's Wharton who wants to extend uh, their, their uh, University of Pennsylvania business school out to uh, campus, remote campus uh, sites around the world. Uh, these are all use cases. NCR, their, their project is around disaster recovery. They need the network to be there, right? And so uh, whatever, you know, the simplicity is important for these customers, and it isn't enough for these customers to just make it a little less complex. They want networking. They want the simplicity of networking that a software-defined approach provides. And we'll talk more through that as we go through the day. So this is an illustration, you know, with, with that increasing uh, customer adoption toward cloud. Uh, we view it as the, our, you know, our perspective is that the networking landscape is changing. Uh, and I want to show you where we play within that landscape. So at the bottom, you know, this is an environment we all know, right? It's the data center, the traditional data center, uh, the WAN connectivity, uh, corporate VPNs and users getting connectivity back to the data center. Uh, that environment exists today and, and, and that's one that's well understood. But as, as these organizations move to cloud, it's creating a lot of VPC sprawl, right? VPCs in AWS and, and Google, uh, VNets in Azure. Uh, we've heard from AWS that they expect a 4x increase in the number of VPCs over the next few years. So this, this uh, environment is growing rapidly uh, and organically as well. And, and it needs connectivity amongst each other in the cloud. It needs connectivity to users. It needs connecti uh, connectivity to branch and, and locations on the ground. Where we play is in the uh, cloud router space. Uh, and, and we actually categorize this in two different ways. We, have, uh, we, we acknowledge V routers. So these are typically uh, uh, data center hardware routers that are now VMs running in the cloud. And our approach of a software defined cloud router. And again, we're going to talk more about that through the day. We also deliver uh, security capabilities in the cloud, egress security, layer four firewall capabilities, and other security services, and connectivity from these branch sites and users into the cloud. Uh, uh, just a quick comment on the, uh, our question for the delegates. Uh, in terms of the increasing number of VPCs, uh, could anyone comment on what they're seeing on, on this, the number of accounts or VPCs being generated? From an Atos point of view, I can tell you that a lot of our customers that I see um, actually do have a lot of VPCs, but their strategy normally is not to have multiple VPCs, so sort of a one-to-one -one relationship, for example. Now, there are different models, obviously. I'm, I'm generalizing here. Yeah. Um, but one-to-one -one association between 
account and VPC. Yeah. But also, yes, different VPCs for different purposes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so how does all this work? And I want to give you a, a brief overview of our solution and how it's deployed. Um, it consists of two components. First, there's the, the, the AVX controller. So this is the centralized controller. This is the capability that, again, automates and orchestrates uh, deployment of gateways. So what happens is uh, you can, as a customer, deploy that controller in your own, as an AMI in your own uh, AWS environment, or you can deploy our version of it as a hosted service. Uh, you then create a trust relationship with your AWS account and our controller. And when you do that, then we have full visibility into your, into your environment <coughs> in Amazon, for example, right? And then what you can start doing is building out networking use cases by deploying and using the controller to automate the deployment of gateways, which are essentially EC2 instances. And they get deployed out into that environment and can support a variety of different use cases. Um, uh, but they take over the routing, they take over the security, they take over all the logging and visibility uh, of what's going on in that environment. They understand what network they're in, uh, they're native to that environment, and they, they can perform those functions uh, in the public cloud. And you know, the reason we built it this way and, and Sherry architected the solution this way is really to help customers deal with some of the biggest challenges that they're facing as they move to public cloud. The first of which is expectations, right? On-prem, uh, I think we've, you know, th that environment has, has historically a, a one to two week, and that's in the best case scenario, if there's a, a new route that needs to be built or a configuration change that needs to be made, you know, that's, that's accepted practice. Uh, in the cloud, that two weeks doesn't exist. That's, that's foreseen as a, a blocker to the innovation and the agility that the DevOps team is trying to roll out into the cloud. So expectations are very different, and, and that solution helps them meet that environment or that expectation. There's also um, a very different skill set in, in, in most companies uh, where on-prem uh, you had networking is complex and you had to be a CCIE and you had to be able to understand CLI and build out networking use cases. Uh, in the cloud, they get a lot done with fewer people and there's much, uh, much broader uh, capabilities and skill sets across a broad set of, of capabilities. We don't think the answer is to bring that networking expertise requirement into the cloud we think the answer is to lower the bar on who can deliver networking and who can manage networking, just like you know, AWS lowered the bar on who can, who can execute compute and storage. And finally, the scale is very different. So um, you know, on-prem, you, you typically had a three to five year architectural plan for your network. Here in the cloud, we see it growing much more organically. Uh, and I talked about a little bit about the, uh, the Amazon predictions around scale of VPCs. Um, so that creates a different, uh, you know, a different uh, set of circumstances to deal with for an organization trying to build connectivity uh, at scale. <laughs>